let's build an asset management app with Power Apps. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the barcode reader on a mobile app because I did a video on the barcode reading and you guys loved it. We had all these follow-up questions like how do I interact with the data now that I know how to scan data? So this app is gonna be about all about the how to interact with data. So we're gonna have an app that is going to scan a barcode. It's gonna go check our data source. If the data is in there, so the asset has been scanned before, it'll show you the details and you can update them. Or if the asset doesn't exist, it's like, hey, it doesn't exist. And then you'll fill in the blanks and then you'll be able to add it to the data source. So one screen, one little button will let us manage everything about assets. Sound like fun? Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here we are on my phone. We're going to click on scan. And now when we do this, I will invoke the barcode reader that's built into the Power App. I'm going to scan this lovely barcode here. And I've got it set to manual mode, right? We'll hit scan because... You know, I usually do it auto, but I figured for this example, it was easier to see it if I manually scanned it. There you go. We've chosen it. And because I've scanned this asset before, it's like, hey, here are the details. Here's your asset tag. Here's your description. There's a quantity. I can say change picture. And I can go, you know, we got rid of one of those. So now we're down to two. And then I can just say update asset. Boom. It is saved and okay. Or if we go back, let's scan this lovely little buddy tool. So we hit scan again, right? So here's a little buddy tool. Isn't it cute? It's adorable. Right, if we go to scan this one, we hit the scan. And this particular asset, right, it was not found. I've never scanned this one before. And so then now I would just fill in the information. I'd be like, you know, buddy toy. And then I think we have like a hundred of those. So instead of using the arrows, I'm actually using the keyboard there. We'll say change our picture. We'll take a photo like so. You can see the chewy toy in the background. And then we can say use photo. And now if we add asset, after a moment, we get the big OK button again. Boom. And now we've got both of those in there. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's switch in and start looking at how to build this. Okay. So I've put this whole thing in a solution, right? Called the barcode asset management. If we go in here, we're going to see that that solution contains my table, my sitemap, a model driven app and a canvas app. That's right. I forgot to show you, but I also built a model driven app to kind of do the backend management. That's right. So like if we want to go in here and check out that orange water bottle again, we use the bot, the model driven app on the back end. And then you oftentimes you'll see that in business solutions, right? We've got a Canvas app that's nimble, light, just doing the scanning, the asset management, all that type of stuff. But when I need to come back over here and manage the assets at scale, do the bulk operations and review the data, I'm going to often do that in a desktop-based app. And then because we're using Dataverse in this example, I was able to make a desktop app in just a second using model-driven apps. All right, so now I can come in here, edit, close, report on this stuff, export it, all that fun stuff that model driven apps does. Anyway, by building all of that inside of a solution here, then what that's letting me do is package it up. So if you want to download this entire working app, so it's just turnkey, right? You can just go out to training.powerapps91.com, click on the YouTube library, and you can get this app. Okay, so let's click here on our uh, Canvas app though. That's what we want to work on. So we'll say edit. Okay, so here is our Canvas app. And really, I did everything on really all the works on. Two screens, I guess, right? So this particular screen, what this one is going to do is this is going to invoke the barcode scanner. So this big green button down here, this is actually the barcode reader, right? I went up here to insert, and then I just searched for barcode, and I added a barcode reader, and I changed the text, changed the color to green, right? That, that's all I added. And if you're not familiar with barcode reader, we're not going to get into details of how it works, but there's a whole video up there that talks you through it. But so assuming you understand how it works, if we go here and we're going to look at the scan button, what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the on scan property. So this is what fires when it successfully scans something. Okay. And so I'm going to do a few things in this particular example. I'm first going to set var scan. So I'm going to create a variable called var scan, and I'm going to reference the barcode that they just scanned. So in the case of the, uh, you know, orange water bottle here, it was like a 0002. Okay. So I put that into a variable. Then I'm going to create another variable called var record. And I'm going to do a lookup against my data source. So I am using Dataverse here, but you could be using SharePoint, SQL, Excel, Salesforce. I don't care what you're using. But we're using a lookup function to say, hey, look at that table. Find where the asset number is equal to that variable. And so find the one where it is A0002. Put that record inside of our record. Now, that is exactly what happened when we did this one, right? But when we scanned Buddy, who was not in there, this would have got set the variable to blank. That's important because the next line is, hey, if is blank for our record, so if you'd scan buddies, 005, I think, um, that is really tiny for my eyes. 
Um, if you say if is blank var record, so buddies would have been blank, then we're going to change var record to be default asset management, right? Because we're going to use this with patch in a minute. And when you patch, if you patch a default record, that says create a new one, add a new one to the database for me. Whereas if you patch an existing record, then it will update its values. We're also going to set var quantity. So we're going to create a variable for tracking the number of these items you have. And we're going to use the coalesce function. So the coalesce function says use the first non-blank value. So if I said coalesce and I had scanned this guy, right, I think there was three or four of these, it would have said, oh yeah, var record quantity was four. And so var quantity would become four. But in the case of buddy, where var record quantity is blank, then it would not do that and it would set it to one. So this is how, you know, coalesce is a great function for avoiding lots of ifs, right? If you're finding yourself all the time being like, hey, I need to check if this thing's blank. And then if it is, do something. If it's not, do something else. Like, like we did here. So in this if, we had to do it that way. But when you're setting values, you're going to do this. You're going to see in a minute we have a coalesce with three different ones. Because it's just going to take the first non-blank value out of here. So for the orange bottle, it took the three or the four. For Buddy, because that was blank, it took the one. Okay? So it's getting all the things ready. And then once it's like, hey, okay, I got all my pieces. What are you going to do next, Shane? I navigate off to button screen. I don't know why I named it button screen, but I did. So inside the editor, most of the time, if you hit play and hit scan, what it will do is it will simulate that it scanned a barcode with a value of one, two, three, one, four, one, two, right? So basically it has a fake barcode that it put in there because it knows that you, you can't invoke the barcode reader on a desktop PC. If you need to use a barcode reader or a desktop PC, then check out that video that talks about how to use a USB scanner. We're not doing that in this scenario though. So then now I've got a label here and it's basically, hey, if it is blank, right? If the asset number was blank, show them this message. If not, show them this message. So we're just giving them a little bit more context. This is just a label that says asset tag. This is a input that is set to default to the var scan. And the input uh, control here though is set to display mode of view over here on the right. The reason it is set to display mode of view is because we want them to see the asset tag, but I don't want them editing that, right? If that's what the barcode scanner read, I want that written on the screen, okay? So I'm just showing it to them again, basically. Description's a label. This is another text input. It is mode is set to multi-line, so that way you get lots of room to write a long description if you want. Display mode is edit, and it is defaulting to var record description. So when you scan this, it said orange water bottle. When you scan this, it showed nothing because it was blank, okay? So that's all worked out by having that variable either being blank or populated. Kind of cool. Speaking of cool, down here then, for this input, right, so this is another text input, it is set to the variable var quantity. Remember, that's the thing that we coalesced, and so we got like four when we scanned the orange bottle. The reason I want this one to use a variable instead of the field directly is because if you click this up arrow, I want to take that variable and I want to increment it by one. If you hit the down arrow, I want to decrement it by one. So I just thought that was a cute, quick way to, you know, add in the app. So if you're on your phone and you just want to remove one from inventory, add one real quick, you don't have to open up the keyboard and erase the old number, type in the new number, right? So I was trying to make it a little bit quicker entry for the, the average bear using those cute little things. Finally, this down here, this is a add mix, picture control, right? So insert under media and then add picture. So you put that in there. The add picture control over here on the left, if you look, is actually two things. It is an add media button. That is what it takes and allows you to um, add the picture. And then the upload image is what is showing the, the picture, right? So it's an image control. So what I needed to do was I needed to change the way this image control worked. So I went to the image control and said, hey, your image property, we're using that coalesce again. Remember, show me the first one that's not blank. Check and see, is there anything in var record asset image full? So if that database table, or database, if that database record has an image already and it's in that variable, then we would show that. So the orange water bottle, we showed it. If that wasn't there, then what I want you to do is show me what the add media button one has. So if they've scanned, uh, taken a picture, then show me what the, they've taken a picture of. If they haven't taken a picture yet, show me the sample image. Now, if you're watching during the demo, you might have noticed that when we scanned Buddy, it showed the orange water bottle when we first got there. The reason it did that was because I forgot to reset things, right? So I needed to have a, uh, a reset function that ran here, 
and I had not done that. So that was kind of a whoopsie on my part. So one of the things that you'd want to do is you'd want to make sure that the, these controls are getting reset when the screen loads. Like, so I could have just said, or could just go here, like to just literally fix this. I probably need to think about this more, but at a high level, I would have just said, reset add media one or media button one. I, ugh, so many words. And then that would have put it back when the screen loads, it would reset every time. So that would have stopped that image from being there. So that, that was a little boo-boo I needed to fix. And there you go, we fixed it. Finally, last but not least, We've got down here the update asset where my cursor go. There it is, <laughs> update asset. And so the update asset, then what we're going to do is we're going to first create a variable called var show spinner, set it to true. It is, uh, we're going to also set another variable called var message to saving, right? If you notice when I hit save, it was, it said saving for a second. Then it's going to go patch that record. So patch asset management var record. Once again, if var record was this, then it would update this one. If var break record was defaults, it was creating a new one, like in the buddy scenario. Then we're just, you know, patching in the fields, right? So that's the, the tag field, that's the description field, that's that quantity field that we used. Really here, I could have also just said use var quantity, uh, but the problem was if you use var quantity, then you don't want to make this editable. And so you can actually still edit this if you wanted to. So if you wanted to manually type in 30, you could edit it manually. So I wanted to make it that it used the input here, not the variable, because the variable would not change if this happened. And then set the asset image to the uploaded image. And then we set update context var message to saved. Okay. So let's let's hit the thing and see what happens, right? So we're going to take this. This is that one, two, three, four browser test update two. We'll change its quantity to two. Um, and just keep in mind, right, like when you're testing and building, adding an asset that uses that fake asset tag, making my life a lot easier. Because I can test in the, the browser here instead of having to jump over to my phone to test. So now we'll say update asset. We get the spinner. The spinner went away faster than I can even say spinner because the patch happened that fast. So then now with all these controls exposed, I can better show you that here we've got a container. This container's visible property is set to var show spinner. So that's the thing we set to true. This right here, this text bar or text label is showing us var message. So remember, it's, it was set to saving. And then when it was done saving, it got set to saved. Okay. So that's how it, this is message is changing. It's just showing a variable here that we're updating along the way. This OK button. All it does is set var center spinner to false, which will then close this pop-up. The way that the button gets shown though, is if you look, there is a visible here and it says, Hey, if the var message is not saving, then show me, right? So basically when it's saved, why is that important? Because if you also look at the image control, it has a visible property. That was the spinner you were seeing. And it says only show me this if var message equals saving. So that's how I have both of them on the screen, basically in the same spot, but we're just showing you the right one. Cause I don't just want to be able to click okay while it is still in that saving state. So that's why while it's in saving, we show the little spinny thing says, wait your, wait your turn. But then when we say, uh, when that goes away, because it gets changed to saved, then the green button shows up. And when you click on the green button, you know, that says, okay, then you'll be able to do this. You could also use this if you wanted to add logic to check for errors and you want a way to say, hey, you weren't successfully saved. You know, you could add all that logic in. Where would you add all that logic though, right? All the logic of how to handle different scenarios would be here, right? Because you're going to do the set and then we check to make sure, you know, that the set didn't get set to an error, right? The, the, the patch didn't fail. As long as it didn't fail, then you want to set the message to save to make all the pop-up stuff change. If it was an error, maybe you set the message to var message error, and then you have a go back button that shows up, right? So they can try again. I didn't get into all that complexity, but there's a lot of different little stuff that you can do there. And speaking of little stuff that you can do, so keep in mind, I've got some upcoming live trainings, right? I'll put a link up there, but basically you go to training.powerapps91.com. We've got a live 201 class, which is with me teaching Power Apps and Power Automate. We got a live 202, which is with Juan learning about model driven apps. And then we've got a live 301 that is coming, which is going to be app building, end to end building an app completely. Yeah, that's right. A whole week of just building one giant app. We run most of them about once a quarter. Okay, that was enough blah, blah, blah. Switch back over. Okay, so that is how this lovely little app works, right? The, the biggest thing that a lot of you struggle with, I think, it's this. You know, you scan something, you've got the barcode. 
how do I go and see, is that in my inventory? Is that in my table, right? And it's back to that lookup. This is the number one thing that people asked in the last video about the comments for, how do I do lookups using that information? So this is how you reference that information, right? You just you grab the code, you do a lookup against the data source and you take action. Now, then at that point, whether you are patching and doing all the complexities I did here, like it's a lot of cool stuff. Um, but I can understand that sometimes you don't even want to do all that. Like you literally just want to see it. That would be easy enough. Now, and then on the model driven side, like I don't want to get too far into that because, you know, teaching model driven apps isn't really my thing. That's Juan's thing. But if we go look real quick for the, the key for the model driven app is really about the table, right? So I go back in my solution, back into the table and I went into the form for the table and I'm like, Hey, their main form, I went here and I customized this. So this is where I set the fields that I wanted to show, the order that I wanted. I went from a one column layout to a two column layout. I was able to just kind of quickly change this by dragging and dropping. Like if you're like, hey, I don't want to see the modified stuff, just go here, get rid of it, right? Get rid of that one. Boom, delete, delete. And then I would just save and publish. And then they would just be gone like that, I, right? That's the beauty of model-driven apps. You kind of customize the form this way. Yeah, we won't save that. We'll say back, leave. I customized the form. I did, went to the view, I did the same thing, right? I found that public uh, main default view. I changed the columns, I changed the order, I could change how they were sorted, filtered, all that stuff, but I didn't really have to do much. I just kind of threw these in here real quickly. But you know, if I wanted to be like, hey, I want the description columns to be bigger, I want bigger descriptions, right? Just drag, go, and we've got what we want. Um, you know, and if I wanted then, you know, say maybe quantity needs to go over here, and then we want to actually make quantity smaller to larger, and so then now we can always look at things that way, right? And then once again, I just hit save and publish, and boom, that's done. And so that's all I did, right? I customized the form, I customized the view, we go back, we leave here, and then over here under apps, we're gonna go to new app. I said model-driven app, I gave it a name, I said create. And so then here I said add a page, I chose my Dataverse table, I searched for asset management, which is the name of my table, we added it, boom, right? There's my view, I can click in here. There's my fields, all the stuff that we just changed, right? We didn't publish it, so it's, that's why it doesn't look different. Uh, we could go and switch the new look, but that was it. And then I just published my model-driven app, and that was how you saw what I had over there. Model-driven app's pretty fast, pretty easy. Um, all this being built inside of a solution makes this very easy for me to then make it someone export the solution. Those of you who subscribe to our YouTube resource library over on our training site, Boom, you can load this up, you put it in, it sets up all the tables and everything for you. Nice and easy, no big deal. And speaking of the tables, because I did not show that because I'm a slacker, let's go back, leave that. So the app runs on just one simple table and really the table just has um, four columns that we care about. I created an asset image column, right? That's where we stored the picture. I created a asset number column, that was the barcode. I created a description column, seeing a live text, right? That's where we type in those descriptions. And then down here at the bottom, I created a quantity column, which is just a whole number. Um, so that was all the table was. Remember, I built it in Dataverse. You could have done it minus the model-driven app stuff using SharePoint. So anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas about how you could leverage the model-driven side as kind of the back end to that cute little front end that we made with Canvas apps. So yeah, nice, quick, easy walkthrough, but hopefully this gets your mind going, right? We use this for asset management, inventory management. Um, we've seen people use these type of things and other weirder scenarios for like check-ins and things like that, right? You could also add some, you know, check-in, check-out. So if you want to be able to better control it, there's just so much you can do once you get comfortable with it. And barcodes are a great tool, not just for asset management, but when you don't want a user to type, right? Like you just want them to be able to say, hey, I'm working in this location. Instead of having them type in that location, have them scan the barcode that swipes in that location. Or I've seen like a inventory app, or not inventory, of like a manufacturing app where they were putting things together. And so basically the person used the app to kind of scan where they were in the process. So they were kind of able, they didn't want to have to reach down there, do drop downs, things like that. They just picked up the phone, scan, 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 scan. And that was how they were showing the progress of the item they were building moving throughout the, uh, the assembly process. So that's everything I've got for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Get any questions, comments, leave them below. I always try to read those and I respond to thousands a year, but not all of them by any means, but I try. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.